The surface of our Earth is very irregular with cliffs and valleys and hills and gullies. Geologists refer to that as landscape. That landscape was formed by erosion. How did that happen? We talked about how the sedimentary layers are deposited, by water mostly, and when they were deposited, the layers covered very huge areas. In the picture on the right, you see these mesas sticking up. The layers of rock forming those used to cover the entire area, but most of it has been eroded away. That's the process that produces the current landscape. In the left, you see canyons with layers that also used to cover the whole area, but a lot of it has been eroded away to leave that fascinating landscape. Now let's look at some examples and discuss how this happens. This cliff that you see is called a straight cliff because it's sort of straight for 50 miles. So it's also called 50 mile mountain. So why is that cliff there? It isn't because the land has been pushed up along a fault. There's no fault here. As you can see from the diagram, there are layers of rock that have been folded up somewhat and then just eroded away at the left. And in the picture, the cliff is facing the right, so all that sediment has been eroded away from the right side. So the sediment beside this 50-mile-long cliff were eroded away. That's a tremendous amount of erosion. To the west of the Strait Cliffs in Utah and northern Arizona is a major geologic landscape feature called the Grand Staircase. As you can see in this picture, it's a series of cliffs that form a staircase. You won't climb this staircase unless you're Paul Bunyan, but it's a very interesting feature. It starts in Arizona with the Mugion Rim, which is a cliff, and a whole series of sediments end at that cliff. Then you go north past the Grand Canyon. The next cliff is called the Chocolate Cliffs, and then the Vermilion Cliffs, the White Cliffs, the Gray Cliffs, and the Pink Cliffs up and towards central Utah. And when we study it carefully, it's obvious the sediments, for instance, that form the Chocolate Cliff were not deposited to the north and end at the Chocolate Cliff. Geologists are very certain that those layers to the right used to go all the way down into Arizona, and we don't know how much farther, but they've been eroded away to leave these cliffs. So the question is, why did erosion happen in a way that left this series of cliffs? And that's not an easy thing to explain in the conventional geological approach. Here we have some photographs showing that series of cliffs. The one to the left is a telephoto view looking to the north. So you see the vermilion cliffs at the bottom, and then above that is the white cliffs, and then the gray cliffs, which are kind of obscure in the distance there, and then the pink cliffs, one above the other. You can see in the diagram to the right those same cliffs portrayed. The top picture is a little bit different kind of approach. You're looking along the white cliff and to the gray cliffs in the distance. You'll see that the sediments forming the white cliffs make a bench above the white cliffs going off into the distance. So this really is a series of steps, enormous steps. And the amount of sediment that was eroded out of Wyoming, Utah, and Colorado, and Arizona is absolutely awesome. But when we try to understand how this got eroded away, that's where it gets puzzling. The usual explanation will be that rivers flowing through this area have gradually eroded away and removed this sediment. But there's a problem here. Rivers leave a bank on both sides. They don't carve a one-sided structure like the Grand Staircase. The Grand Staircase could not be produced by river erosion. You see in the picture at the left, a river, and this has very sharp cliffs. Rivers don't always make those kind of steep cliffs. You could make a broader valley, but no matter what it's like, it has a bank on both sides. The Grand Staircase does not have a bank on both sides. You might say the southern series of cliffs, which should be there, is not there. It never was there. So how did this happen? The Grand Staircase could not be produced by river erosion. It seems to require a massive flood over the entire region to shape the staircase. The evidence I've presented seems to indicate that standard geologic theory does not have an explanation for how you formed the Grand Staircase, and I have not found anything in the geological literature that even tries to explain it. I've said that it requires a massive flow of water over the area, so how do you do that? The best explanation for how you do that is you erode it at the end of or even after the global flood. <laughs>